Now, we're supposed to be running this car on Banganomics principles, which means that um, we are not meant to be spending any money on it, but I suppose I'm like every other person who buys a car, uh, or gets hold of a car in this case, and um, can't help but make it a little bit better. Uh, the car's running as sweet as a nut now, um, since we did all the electronics stuff on it. But since it's been around, we've noticed it loses a little bit more water than it should do. Now, on these cars with the Duratec engine, there's a couple of points which are sort of notorious for losing a bit of water. So we're going to address that today. Um, but before we start, we're going to give the cooling system a flush. Now, this isn't as radical as it seems. It's just a simple case of putting in some rad flush preparation, giving it a bit of a run and then flushing out the system, draining it and flushing it through and getting rid of all the gunk. So that's going to be our first port of call. Um, just drop some rad flush into it. So this is the radiator flush we're going to use. Um, when I say it's quite expensive, it's less than a tenner. Um, so it's a few quid and this is by Powertech. Uh, made in Germany so it must be good. So all we do is give it a shake and um, you just pour it into the expansion tank and then we'll simply give the car a run get it nice and warm uh, let it circulate and hopefully it will work its magic okay so the engine's been run and it's not just because it's getting warm, it's about circulating the coolant. So it's had a good run and the uh, rad flush has gone all the way through the system. So, right, what we're going to do, first of all, the header tank itself, you can see there's some history of this water around here. It looks like it's blowing out. So it could be a duff cap, but these tend to go a bit brittle. Uh, and the down below, underneath there, look, you can see there's... I don't know if you can see this, but uh, let's zoom in and see if that will. There's some witness marks down here of old rusty water. I think that's been leaking. These get brittle. They get. Uh, I've had a couple of old Fords, not cars, but uh, a Mondeo and a Focus. Both the header tanks went brittle with age and started to get hairline cracks, in which was letting out water, and that's where water was going. The other thing on the car, on this one, down here, down the side of the engine. You can just see it there. Um, that's the thermostat housing, and um, it's like a junction of all the hoses. Um, for some reason, they seem to fail and leak quite a lot. I can just see a little bit of rusty water around the sender at the top there. Uh, so we bought a new one of those. We're going to replace that as well. So we've got to remove that to flush the system through anyway. Um, so hopefully, with that replaced and with the header tank done, uh, we should have a nice watertight car. So, going to get the air cleaner out of the way first of all, and then we'll be able to get at this thermostat housing. So immediately, if I just so I've just taken the air cleaner out, and there is the thermostat housing. As you can see, three pipes on the top, inlet and outlets. So quite a complex setup. So. There are six 8mm bolts holding that in, so one there, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I think I may have already discovered why it might have been leaking a little bit, because that bolt right under there uh, was loose. So that might have been contributing to the uh, loss of water, but we'll take it off now and have a look. Uh, just a precaution, I've put a a rubber glove over the air intake there's a the throttle body uh, a lot of water splashing about in a minute because I'm going to start flushing through the system don't want any going into the uh, into the inlet so just a little precaution there right. simply so we've got three hoses we've got the two there at the back those two those two which are the heater hoses that goes to the header tank and then we had six bolts and off it came and it looks like someone has been well and truly in there before us look at the amount of silicone they've used to seal this up 
um, and not even good quality silicon by the looks of it this is not pretty um, in case I was wondering why this might have been leaking this this old gasket is so destroyed it just doesn't even get close to fitting so and I think this is damaged yeah this is very damaged look at this the housing's all split that's all split the gasket is so misshapen there's no chance that's going to fit now, I'm sorry to go on about this but this is incredible the gasket from the Black Lagoon this let me hold it that way look that should actually fit this this groove here this gasket should fit into it comfortably and I really don't know what it's like it's stretched or something that side has been doubled over so that has effectively not made a gasket seal it's actually made a breach on the seal so that's incredible and now just to give you a comparison here's our new one old new as you can see the gasket fits neatly I think we may see a little improvement here so here we are back with our old thermostat housing so what I've done is so the, the end housing just unscrew that and there is our thermostat so we're going to take that out and start and get rid of that you can see now that's straight through so what we're going to what what would happen is if you tried to flush out the radiator flush out the cooling system with the thermostat in place of course as soon as cold water hits the thermostat it shuts so the system's closed what we'll do is we'll put that back on there we'll put all this back into place and then we can pump water right the way through the system and uh, the thermostat's not going to be in the way that's the theory and it usually works because it's pouring down I'm just going to show you quickly what I've done okay so this is where the bottom radiator hose comes on to which I pulled off so I've rigged up a bit of spare old top hose that I found and that's onto there and then there's a hose pipe going into there so that's water running through there and then down through the back and what you can hear is the water running through the system and leaking out of everywhere it would appear um, good demonstration of how unwatertight that uh, thermostat housing is without its crack gasket water running everywhere and then what we do the bottom hose is under here and as you can see the water's running out from that I want that water to run clear so we'll let it run for 10 minutes and just let the water run through it and I'm gonna have a sandwich while we're waiting okay standard summer weather has returned outside oh, it's pouring down so uh, we flushed it through um, now we've got to take off this is still the old housing so we're going to take this off again get all the pipes out of the way and then we're going to clean up the mating face on the block okay so this is the face I was talking about you've got to clean up as you can see there's the plug out there. there's bits of old silicon there's corrosion there's the mark from the old glass gasket so what you want ideally is this to be flat and clean no scratches um, that's how it seals if there are scratches if there are scratches across there's a chance the water can find its way through there so that's what you've got to avoid you've just got to clean this face off it's out of a plane so the edge is completely flat so when I put it onto the block it's not going to put any scoring as long as you keep it flat against that flat edge Just so bummed up with silicon you 
this is why you should be really careful using liquid gaskets because a little skin might be fine but when you put big gobs in like that it's sort of only a matter of time before it detaches itself and finds its way into something where you'd rather it wasn't like your radiator core or the water pump or anywhere else for that mate you just don't want it in there do you so go easy i'm not saying don't use it because it is the bodger's savior where things are a little bit tired but a little skim is all you need you can at your own risk use some wet and dry um, and sort of polished surface but you've got to use a block because that's got to be flat uh, rubber gaskets will only take up so much so you're asking a lot of it to try and take up as you can see there's still some um, corrosion there this has been run with our antifreeze well looks at some point in its life so uh, the alloy has started to corrode and um, and it's just the way it is we'll see what we can do but uh, that's clean ready for the new uh, thermostat housing to go on so all ready to put this new thermostat housing in just a top tip for doing this when you're going to put it in rather than fighting it afterwards it's much easier to pull that bottom hose on and just push that in and put the uh, put the jubilee clip on before you start bolting it in and then you don't have to struggle right down behind it to get it on once it's in place so right let's get that bolted up like anything where you want to tighten it down even and flat it's even pressure gradually on all the bolts so there's six bolts and and like you're doing a head gasket or something you want to do a little bit at a time on each and sort of go across it it's always sort of like a elongated star design uh, that way it, it will gradually tighten down and it will be square um, let's hope that's not going to leak that's looking good to me and that's a bit of an engine bay cam so there you go all finished and in place all the pipes back on uh, the temp sender and all the hoses can we go any deeper there you go there's the back hose right down there bottom hose of the radiator rather so lovely neat job let's just hope it holds water okay so the final job we're going to do is to replace the header tank which is normally with their cap on so we have got the return pipe here we've got one is it 10 mil bolt just there uh, there's a little rubber bush which is down on the side there that just slots in but that's completely broken up and then you've got the outlet hose down there bottom so it's just two clips one bolt and a little rubber bush and it should just pull out and to be honest that's it out you see what a weird shape it is there um, there's nothing on it which suggests to me that that was leaking um, in the past I found it it cracks there and you get a you'll get a witness mark down the underside of the expansion bottle or you will find it where the molded seams are which is around there they split uh, and there's no there's no obvious there's there is some external staining but nothing radical the most is around the cap so maybe it was the cap um, but uh, replacements are fairly cheap so I'm going to bob one on and we'll have a nice new clear bottle as well so we can see the coolant So all we've got left to do now is to refill the cooling system. Now the Ford car with the Duratec, I am reliably informed by my local motor factors, uses oat, oat um, antifreeze, organic acid technology. There you go, a bit of technical stuff for you. Um, so usual stuff, I think it's 50-50. Uh, I'm going to check and then we'll top it up. Make sure there's no air in the system and I think our little car is good to go. 
So apparently the cooling system's capacity is 5.25 litres. Down to minus 17, this stuff is recommended 30%, so a third of 5.25. Let's say, uh, with good maths, 2 litres. So 2 litres should make a nice rich mix. It's almost 40, maybe even 50, I don't know. We'll chuck some in and see how we go. Um, all right, so we've just, you've just seen us top that up, and you may have noticed that it filled right up to the top. Um, that's just two, two and a bit liters we've put in of antifreeze. Um, obviously, we've got to bleed the system now. There's still a load of air in there, and that level is going to drop right down. So we'll start the engine, get the coolant circulating, get the air up to the top, which is obviously the header tank. Make sure there's no air locks. We've got the heater switched on, so water can run through the heater. Any air locks there will be pushed out. Um, and then we'll just top it up with fresh clean water and um, hopefully we've got about 40%, 50% antifreeze in there so that's more than it had in before um, very good, let's see if we can get that air out of the system so, cars have been warm mate you'll notice that the reservoir level has dropped right there okay so what we were looking for is, obviously that's the thermostat there, we want to get the engine up to temperature, and then this is the, down there, that's the bottom hose that feeds into the radiator, so you're waiting for that to get hot basically, that means the thermostat has opened and hot water is running through. The system is pressurised now, um, all the hoses are hot, we've got no leaks that I can see is all good news. Uh, the fan hasn't cut in yet but it should in a minute and I think we can say that that's a successful job. So another job well done. All right, <laughs> hold my hands up. We weren't going to do anything more to the car were we? But you know it's that thing where sometimes you just think well it would be just a little bit better if it was you know like this weeping a bit of water which is a bit of a nuisance every time you get in it you have to check the water so hopefully now you'll just be able to get in and drive it um it didn't take that long it's not that difficult and we've checked it for leaks we'll let it cool down and then we'll check the coolant level again because expansion tanks especially when you just bled a system uh, i've always find that they draw water back down into the system so you'll find it's low next time you come out once it's properly cool so top it up to the mark when it's cool but make sure you check it we will okay uh, thanks so much for watching um, if you've got any comments please comment below uh, if there's anything you'd like to see us tackle on this car in particular or any of the other fleet drop us a line see if we can help you out um, and uh, see you again soon and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because there's loads more coming bye for now